Hello kitty, Shrunkle Spurt here. Hope you're having a ruddy, lovely week. And welcome to yet another bowel cleansingly thrilling episode of Techspert Weekly. Yet another god awful online spreader of disinformation. Well, no, not disinformation per se. I don't spout complete and utter bollocks on purpose with intent to deceive. I'm just too lazy to actually research stuff and usually more than a little bit pissed. And the big news this week was, of course, Google Shaped as they finally whipped out all of their pixels, all four of the buggers, alongside some fresh new earbuds and that Pixel Watch 3. And if you were playing the drinking game at home, by the way, where you take a shot every time someone says AI, you probably found that your liver exploded about two minutes in. Now believe me, your Uncle Spurt will be all over those pixel blowers next week when the embargo lifts. But for today's episode, I want to take a closer squint at the Pixel Watch 3, because frankly the old Pixel Watch 2 was a bit of a letdown. And the Pixel Watch 3 seems like it improves on this bad boy in quite a few areas. So spin that jingle, Mr. DJ. Techspert Weekly! There is no Mr. DJ, by the way, in case you were wondering, it's just me on my laptop later. Frankly, if I manage to insert the correct jingle, then hooray, because I plan on being absolutely mullered by the end of this video. Now, for this third generation of Pixel Watch, you've finally got a choice of two different sizes. A bigger 45mm bugger alongside the standard 41mm effort. Prices start at 349 British pund for the 41mm Wi-Fi model. You can boost that to 399 for LTE support. Otherwise, the 45mm version starts at 399 GBPs. And you've actually got to pay 100 quid extra, £499 in total, for some LTE action slapped on there. The watch is once again constructed from 100% recycled aluminium and comes in a variety of colours and also straps, from silicon to metal and leathery options if you want to swank it up a bit. Now you should notice a pretty big change for that all-new Actua display which even on the 41mm Pixel Watch 3 is now bigger, brighter, more responsive and generally more spaff worthy versus the old Pixel Watch 2. You'll enjoy more screen space now thanks to the skinnier bezels, while that panel is apparently twice as bright as the previous generation, topping off at 2000 nits. But it can also dip all the way down to just a single nit at night times. It's also now LTPO tech, so a reasonably smooth 60Hz when it's in full on action mode. But that can scale all the way down to just a single hertz for improved power efficiency for the likes of the always-on display. And also, sadly, once again, it's Gorilla Glass 5 protecting the screen. I was really hoping for an upgrade to Sapphire Glass for the Pixel Watch 3, just for improved durability and, you know, more peace of mind. Because let's face it, if you slap this thing off a brick wall or an unruly family member, chances are it's going to get a bit scratched. Still, for the Pixel Watch 3, Google has smushed in quite a few decent features. So, for instance, you've got an auto bedtime mode which can automatically detect when you fall asleep and then switches off your notifications and you're always on display for you. That's definitely an improvement over the whole schedule and nighttime mode shenanigans that we've got right now, especially if you don't have a set bedtime every night because you know you're not f***ing seven years old. And you'll also be able to enjoy a live view from your Nest Cam or doorbell right there on your wrist. And you can get the old uh, two-way chat action on the go right there on your watch as well. So if you're out and about, you'll be able to have a lovely conversation with whatever skiv is trying to kick in your door and nick your PlayStation. And the Pixel Watch 3 also supports the new Call Assist feature. So if someone calls you, but you can't access your phone to pick up at that precise moment, you can just put them on hold with a quick tap of the screen. And that alone for me would be a massive game changer because guarantee every time I get a phone call I'm precisely five seconds into a massive piss. And you know, I'm in my 40s now so it's like mastermind, I've started so I'll most definitely finish. And yes, I am very much the stereotypical bloke who can't concentrate on more than one thing at a time. So inevitably if I do try digging my phone out of my pocket I'll just end up spraying the ceiling. But sadly, it appears that us Brits, once again, will not be able to make full use of this feature at launch because it's going to be America only. So for now at least, looks like that ceiling's going to keep on getting a bloody good clean. As for all the health-based shenanigans, well, the new Fitbit Morning Brief will set you up for the day when you fumble your way out of bed by assessing your overall state and dispensing advice. Or in my case, I'm just expecting it to pop up some kind of shocked emoji. Maybe make a sarcastic comment about how many times I had to roll out of bed to urinate. 
Now, are you one of those people who occasionally likes to go outside for a bit of a run instead of doing normal things like eating chips? Well, the Pixel Watch 3 can help you with timed warm-ups and target pacing while monitoring your cadence, your vertical oscillation and other stuff What I don't know what it is. But if you do want customised run recommendations and personalised training drills, you'll have to hoy a bit more cash at Google for that Fitbit Premium plan. That is after your six free months for purchasing a Pixel Watch 3 runs out. And it appears there's no performance upgrade here either. The Pixel Watch 3 is once again powered by the Snapdragon W5100 tech, backed by 2 gigs of RAM. Now I haven't had a chance to use the Pixel Watch 2 long term because there's been so many smartwatches that I needed to review. But in the times when I've had it slapped on my pale clammy wrist, I've had absolutely no qualms at all with the performance. It's been reasonably smooth, apps have loaded up pretty quick. The main ball ache for me has always been the battery life and technically the Pixel Watch 3 41mm edition has upgraded the battery tech compared with the Pixel Watch 2 because it's now a 307 milliamp hour capacity battery compared with a 306 milliamp hour battery. Whoop. However, the 45 mil version does actually upgrade the battery capacity quite considerably to 420 milliamp hours. That's still smaller than some other Wear OS rivals, the likes of the OnePlus Watch 2, TicWatch Pro, etc. And somewhat surprisingly, Google does quote the battery life as being identical for the 41mm and the 45mm versions of the Pixel Watch 3. We're talking 24 hours with the always on display active. And yes, the 45mm version does have a bigger display to power, but you'd kind of hope that bigger capacity battery would mean, you know, at least a day and a half, two days of battery life maybe. Apparently Google's fresh updated battery saver mode will allow you to get 36 full hours of use on a single charge from both the 41 and 45 mil versions of the Pixel Watch 3. And that is with all of your health tracking shenanigans still enabled. Apparently just knocks off the likes of the always on display, I guess. But of course, even 36 hours, that's still a fraction of what you'll get on the likes of the TicWatch Pro, the OnePlus Watch 2 and Samsung's latest Galaxy watches. And of course, another problem with the Pixel Watch 2 was not only was the battery life rather cack, but also it didn't exactly charge particularly fast. The thing takes about as long as the average Zack Snyder director's cut to finally power back up again. Well, apparently the 41mm version of the Pixel Watch 3 does charge up faster now. In fact, Google has quoted it as 20% faster than the Pixel Watch 2. So now you'll just about squeeze through an entire regular cut of a Zack Snyder film before it's charged back up. Of course, by that point, you'll still probably have topped yourself if you're watching Rebel Moon, or to give it its proper title, Star Wars for c but Google's officially quoted figures are 80 minutes for a full charge of the 45mm version and precisely one hour for the dinkier 41mm effort. As for the rest of the specs for the Pixel Watch 3, well, they're not particularly trouser rouser, mostly the same as the Pixel Watch 2. So for instance, 32 gigs of built-in flash storage. And that right there, in a tasty wee nutshell, is what we know of the Pixel Watch 3. As I say, some pretty good upgrades there, including the bigger, brighter screen with a skinnier bezel, certainly a major improvement over the Pixel Watch 2. But some missed opportunities as well. I was really hoping for some sapphire glass on there. I'm really gutted that some of these great new features aren't coming to the UK, at least not at launch. And is that battery life improvement enough? Well, it'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Pixel Watch 3 down below. I will hopefully be reviewing this bad boy in the coming weeks. And now, of course, it's time for the part of the show that probably causes more riots than Andrew. I'm a massive bellend tit. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <coughs> All right, let's kick off this week with Jithu Nair, who says, Uncle Spurt says stuff in his videos that gets most people demonetized. I hope he's okay. Honestly, I reckon YouTube has just pretty much given up at this point. I haven't had any videos demonetized in bloody ages, despite my best efforts. Maybe I've just conditioned them to accept all this filth, kind of like that Pavlova fellow with his hapless pooch. As for the subject of whether I'm okay or not, well, that is very much a debate that'll take considerably more than the viewers' comments section of a shit internet video to resolve. But thanks for your concern, very much appreciated. Uh, Toonie Goon says, did you just metaphorically bring up your wiener? Metaphorically, perhaps, literally, almost certainly several times. Decepticon215 says, Happy belated birthday. I'm sorry, for some reason I missed that it was your birthday. Thank you very much, uh, buddy. Much appreciated and don't worry, I forgive you. 
Uh, Troy Dial says, must live south of the Thames if Spurt is a connoisseur of Morley's. And Nine Time Music says, I shed a tear of pride when I saw the Morley's sauce, lol. Uh, I have been a South London lad ever since I first moved down this way from Mackham Lands. No real reason for it, it's just how it ended up. I was actually introduced to Morley's my very first day down here as well, because I used to live in a tiny wee flat just a couple minutes walk from Tootenbeck Station. You basically had the tube station, then you had Morley's, and then you had my flat, so... Perhaps unsurprisingly, my dinner at least three or four nights a week was good old Morley's. The introductory special offer they had at the time, $1.99 for two chicken and chips. Always had to fight with the bugger behind the counter, of course, because he would claim the introductory special offer had ended, despite the fact they had a massive f off poster advertising it in the window. And to be fair, this introductory special offer did run for about 15 months while I was down there. I think they just couldn't be asked to take the poster down. And next up, Silfine says, is that the 2A or the 2A Plus that you're using in the viewer comment section? And that was the Nothing Phone 2A Plus. And my full unboxing review video is live right now for anyone who hasn't enjoyed that orgasmic slice of hot video action. Now, last week, I might have had a bit of a moan on about the endless sewer spray of thumbnail designers that clutter up my inbox every single bloody week chastising me for my lack of design flair and insisting that I use their upgraded artworks instead. And for anyone who missed it, here's a quick recap. Here's one recent example from an email where the subject line was literally, your thumbnail sucks. So what do you reckon? Here's the original version, which yes, I admit isn't particularly appealing, mostly because it features my bald Gurnan mug. And then here is the jazzed up photoshopped version from Mr. Graphic Designer. Now Cameron's says, your simple straight to the point thumbnails are a refreshing change of pace to the crayon vomit arrow splattered hellscape that is everyone else's desperate cry for attention. Well that is good to hear, thank you very much. Uh, Trev's Webb says, I think the added hair would be a massive clickbait. And Terrific4092 says, the editors have taken you to Turkey. A bit of uh, hair transplant action for anyone who missed that particular reference. Right, I've got to admit though, after seeing myself with bizarre 80s boy band on drugs hair as generated by Samsung's AI bollockery, I am kind of tempted to add that to all of my thumbnails now. Uh, Vega reckons your thumbnails could use a bit of colour. This is true, as I myself am almost completely devoid of colour. It's another reason I've slapped those big, bold, bright, colourful anime wallpapers on all the blowers. So my thumbnails aren't completely monochrome. Hikari Toyuri says, please don't bring Linus Tech Tip style thumbnails to this channel. Hey, you've got the Uncle Spurt pledge. No Linus style shenanigans around these parts. The Bismarck says, I prefer Uncle Spurt's face unphotoshopped and slightly out of focus. Well, the out of focus bit, absolutely. Jack's Little Portal says, it's difficult to compare your thumbnails because it's difficult to focus on your mug without resorting to a quick rinse of the old eye bleach. Fair. Michael Ball says, do a Macaulay Culkin pose for the thumbnail in your next set of videos. Yeah, I do love the rather limited repertoire of thumbnail pauses that all the tech twats seem to use on here. Because of course there's the I was wrong pause. The oh no they didn't pause. And of course my personal favourite, the whoops, someone just violently inserted themselves inside of me pause. Etc. Well, you'll be very glad to hear, possibly, that the thumbnail cock ends have been back at it again. And about another three dozen of the buggers getting in touch this week. And here's my personal favourite effort. Not only have I apparently turned into Jesus, complete with an ethereal glow, but I've also broken into some rich c**t's house where I'm quickly shooting a thumbnail to trick people into thinking I've got MKBHD style money and production values. Anyway, moving swiftly onwards, Saturn Blue says, I loved all the Australian references this week, but I'm disappointed you didn't mention the drop bears. Yes, I did actually recently introduce my daughter to the whole mythology of drop bears, possibly neglecting to tell her that they were fictional, and now she's adamant she never ever wants to visit Australia. I'll still maintain, though, that even drop bears aren't quite as horrific as those bloody spiders that lurk in the bogs just so they can have a nice little chew on your man meat. At least if you got attacked by a bloody drop bear, they'd probably finish you off rather mercifully quickly rather than... Uh, Snowy134 says, Mr. Spurt, is there a P.O. box that I can send some Spurt to? There isn't, unfortunately. I need to set something like that up. And also, have you ever heard of the legendary Four Locos? Everyone I know has had a near-death experience with a couple of cans of those, including myself. I have not heard of this, but apparently it's legendary enough that it's got its own Wikipedia entry. 
combines alcohol and caffeine. Sounds perfect. Although you, you know it's got to be good when one of the main tabs on Wikipedia is FDA warning. <laughs> and the first Reddit entry is for loco, never again. Uh, just about enough time for a couple more comments before I have to bugger off. So Mohammed says, can someone please tell me where we can get these amazing anime wallpapers from? Well, spin that sh Mr. DJ. Wall.alphacoders.com Wall.alphacoders.com That's where my wallpapers come from. Wall.alphacoders.com uh, Mad Mike is here with a quick joke as well. My son was on eBay all day yesterday. If I find out he's still on there today, I will lower the price. But um, tish. Very good, sir. Trez Droll. And Zippy Finley Adventures says Tiger Tail is the go to ice cream flavour lad. What in the name of Satan's taint is Tiger Tail? Is that like an orange sorbet or something? Oh, f it. It's always when I'm in a rush where I have to bloody Google stuff. Apparently, it's a Canadian orange flavoured ice cream with black licorice swirl. I mean, black licorice is one of the things that Uncle Sperm most definitely does not put in his mouth. And that is a surprisingly short list. So uh, yeah, Tiger Tail, not for me, I'm afraid. Anyway, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Please do slap your comments down there uh, below. Uh, whatever you want, whatever you want to chat about, just, just bung it down there and we'll have a good old natter next week. And speaking of next week... Next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? Well, a Google-shaped reviews embargo might potentially be lifting midway through next week, so definitely stay tuned for a whole heap of content and a bit of Pixly 9 type action. Uh, the EFA pre-brief startup as well, only a couple of weeks until the big EFA Tech Expo out in Berlin, where I'm hoping to get my hands on all kinds of clever new gadgets and phones and all kinds of shenanigans. So yeah, all that remains to be said is please do put subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't done already. And I hope you marvellous buggers have an absolutely bloody fantastic weekend. Cheers, everyone. Love you.